Welcome back to induction. In class, you've seen one example of proving something by mathematical induction. I'm going to take you through a very similar example. So here we want to find the sum of the first n terms of this arithmetic sequence. So before we prove anything, we want to find the sum of this. So let's see, the first n terms, we'd need to know what is the nth term of this sequence. We'll notice that the difference between these is 10. So if I were to write the nth term here, I would say 2 is the first number. We're adding 10 every single time we want to get a new one. And we're doing that n minus 1 time. So I'm just going to simplify that. That would get us 10n minus 8. So we want to add up all of these terms. And in class, we talked about a nice, efficient way of doing that. We would add up the first and the last term. That gets us 10n minus 6. And really, we're pairing everything, so we're just taking the number of pairs and multiplying it by that sum. Since we're adding up n terms and we're pairing them, I say that our sum is really 10n minus 6 times the number of pairs, which is n over 2. If we want to simplify that, we can. That would get us uh, 5n squared minus 3n. All right, so let's try proving that. So now let's prove our statement for all the natural numbers. So to begin, we need that base case to show that it works. So what is the base case? Well, we want to show that if we just start with the first term of the sequence, so in other words, one term, I'm going to let n equal 1. That would just give me the 2. That would be the first number in the sequence. And we want to show, does that equal, when I substitute a 1 into our 5n squared minus 3n. And let's see, 5 minus 3 is 2, so this works. So our base case does hold true. So on our next step, we're going to make that assumption. So we're going to assume that 2 plus 12 plus 22 plus dot, 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 all the way up to some number in the sequence. We're going to call it the kth term. So I'm going to substitute a k in for n. We're going to say that that does hold true, so that means that that sum is going to get us 5k squared minus 3k. Let's put a little note here. We're going to assume that that holds true. I'm also going to make a note about k. We have to say that that's true for some k that is a natural number. So the first and second steps are pretty quick. Now it's time to actually do some, some proving. So we want to show the statement holds true. For the k plus 1 term. So for when n equals k plus 1. And that's what we're going to do right now. So that's really saying does 2 plus 12 plus 22 plus all the way up to the k plus 1 term. So now I'm going to substitute a k plus 1 in for n everywhere I see an n. Just like that. So how are we going to add up all of those things? Well, from step two, we made the assumption that 2 plus 12 plus all the way up to the term that came right before this. So I'm actually going to write that in. The term that came before this one was 10k minus 8. So what did that add up to? That really got us 5k squared minus 3k. So I'm going to do a little substitution right there. And I'm going to keep adding on that last term. Let's simplify it though. That really gets us 10k uh, plus 10 minus 8 was really plus 2. And then again, just to combine our like terms, we get 5k plus 7k plus 2. Now if we show that the right side of this equation is the same as the left side, obviously that's going to show that it holds true. So let's simplify the right side. 
here we'd get 5k squared plus, let's see, 2k times 5 is 10k, and then 1 times 5 is really 5. Let's distribute that negative 3 next, so minus 3k, minus 3. Combining our like terms gets us 5k squared plus 7k plus 2. Excellent. Notice, I didn't really know if these were equal, so I didn't put the equal sign in. Sometimes we like to do this. We like to put this little question mark on the equal sign and then finally put the real equal sign when we know that they're equal. We were questioning if they were equal. Now that they are equal, we can say, yes, we know for a fact that 2 plus 12 plus 22 plus all the way up to the nth term of that sequence will equal 5n squared minus 3n for any natural number. And we like to put that colored in square there at the end to show that we're done with our proof. Before you leave, though, I just wanted to show you another example where the base case actually doesn't start with n equals 1. So in this situation, we want to prove that every polygon with n sides can be divided into n minus 2 triangles. Now, if you don't believe that, uh, just try any shape you want. I'm just going to try a quick pentagon right here. And if I draw in these diagonals, you'll notice that I took a pentagon that has five sides and I turned it into three triangles. So I have this intuition that this is, this is actually a true statement. It's sometimes a good idea to just try examples to see if you even believe the statement before you try to prove it. So why is the base case here not one? Well, can you think of a polygon with one side? No, that would be a line. The smallest polygon I can think of has three sides. Um, and even that is already a triangle. So I'm, I'm thinking that the base case here should be four. So if our base case is n equals four, that means we're starting with a quadrilateral. Just draw a random quad. Something like that. And notice that if I draw in one diagonal, we already have the two triangles. All right, so that proves our base case. We know that this is going to work for, for quadrilaterals. Uh, so now we're going to assume that a polygon with k sides can be divided into k minus 2 triangles. All right? And we should make a little note here where k is a natural number. There's our second step. We want to show that a k plus 1 sided polygon can be divided into two fewer than that, so k minus 1 triangles. So let's take a shape here. So let's pretend that this has k plus 1 sides. Now I actually can't draw that out, so you just have to take my word for it. If I connect these two vertices, notice I've created one triangle here. But I've also created, you do a different color here to show you what I mean, I've also created a polygon with one fewer side than what I began with. This has k sides. We just assumed that a polygon with k sides can be divided into k minus 2 triangles. So this piece already has k minus 2 triangles. This triangle up here is already one triangle. So combined, that gets us k minus 1 triangles. And there we go. We showed by induction that we can always divide a polygon into n minus 2 triangles if it had n sides to begin with. So it's a little bit of a, of a different um, perspective of induction. It doesn't always have to be something with algebra. So in class, you'll be doing a, a mix of some. 
So we'll see you then.